You know, when people think about MSG and they think about umami, when they hear the word MSG, interestingly enough, a lot of people think that it has something to do with Chinese restaurant syndrome or, or they're going to get lots of headaches if they consume it. But you know, as I travel around the world and I go to Asia, where MSG is used a lot, it's fascinating that I don't hear stories about Chinese restaurant syndrome. And in fact, in those countries, it's sort of a given that it's used all the time and nobody complains about it. The fact is, I've got a passion for teaching people about what umami is and what MSG is. Because the reality is that as a chef, it's a tool that I can use to make my food taste better. And it's perfectly safe, many times misunderstood. And that's what this is all about, teaching the science behind umami and MSG. Now to understand what umami is, we have to sort of get into a little bit of protein science because when you understand the science, it all makes sense. And it starts with something called glutamic acid. And glutamic acid is an amino acid. Now, what is an amino acid? An amino acid is one of the building blocks of how you put a protein together. So there's about 20 different amino acids. And to make different proteins, you essentially combine them in different combinations. And that's what makes all the different proteins out there. And glutamic acid is one of the most common amino acids out there. In fact, one of the most common amino acids in our body. So step two, we have this protein all stuck together and in the protein you have pieces of glutamic acid. And what needs to happen to bring this umami flavor about is we have to separate out the glutamic acid from the rest of the protein. And that's done through lots of different ways, lots of different natural ways, actually. And once that glutamic acid is free from the rest of the protein, that's what we call a free glutamic acid. Now, what's so important about that? Well, that is the beginning of how we get umami. Because when we sense this umami sensation in our mouth, the taste of umami, what we're really tasting is that free glutamic acid that gets bound up with a sodium. And so sodium, of course, a very common element. You put the two together, and that's how we get umami. When that molecule hits our taste buds, there's certain receptors that will essentially light up when that molecule bumps into the receptor. And what translates into our brain is this umami sensation, or that sensation of deliciousness. Now there's another molecule that we have to consider when we talk about this umami sensation. And that's something called a ribonucleotide. Big name for a molecule. But why it's so important is that if you take that molecule, the ribonucleotide, and combine it with the umami molecule, those two come in contact with each other inside your mouth or in the food that you're making. What happens is you get a synergistic effect to the flavor of the food. What does that mean? Well, if we think about putting the two together, normally it would be one plus one equals two. You put the two together and you get a little bit of a flavor boost. What happens though with these particular molecules is you get one plus one equals four, or even one plus one equals eight. What does that mean? That means we have a flavor explosion inside of our mouth. And we chefs, we want to take full advantage of that because it makes the food taste great. So where do we find this umami flavor profile? In the kitchen, it's in a lot of different places. It comes in fermented sauces like soy sauce and fish sauce, or maybe as a paste like miso, for instance, or in aged cheeses and in aged hams, maybe in ripe fruits like tomato. You find umami in a lot of places, and what that means is that inside that food, you have that free glutamic acid combining with the sodium, and voila, you have umami. Now you can also get this umami flavor sensation through the use of MSG. And MSG is the purest form of the umami flavor. Originally, it was derived from kombu, or that big seaweed that grows especially off the coast of Japan. And in fact, that's how umami was discovered, by taking the broth, or dashi, that's made from kombu and bonito flakes, and reducing it down until it's crystalline form, and that's the discovery of MSG. Now, today, it's made a little differently, and it's made by a natural fermentation process in which bacteria essentially create that MSG, again, in a very, very pure form. Now, for chefs, the advantage is we can take that crystal and sprinkle it into any food we want, 
and we get that pure umami flavor profile. I've been speaking with chefs around the country about umami and MSG, and it's pretty interesting what they're saying. People think it's a food additive that makes you sick, gives you headaches. It's important to educate people and let them know that this isn't something you know that's created in a lab. It's a naturally occurring part of food. Where I work, it's been for the past 20 years, no MSG, no MSG, everything clean label. But when you hear that there's products that naturally have MSG in it, makes it a totally different thing to look at and maybe other people don't realize that as well. And so I'm going to go back and educate and start to talk about it a little bit and let people see the difference in using the MSG. This product has been around since forever. It's a common um, humanality of taste. Um, so it doesn't have to be treated as a chemical. It can be treated as something that's going to really just enhance flavor, to be used as a tool, a tool in the toolbox um, that can help enhance flavor. So we know that MSG and umami is an amazing tool for chefs because it makes food taste great. But there's a lot of misinformation out there about MSG. In fact, just go to the web and take a look around. Or I've talked to a lot of people, a lot of chefs, and say, you know, why don't you use MSG? And, and I hear all kinds of reasons about why they don't want to use it. But let's take a look at what the science has to say. And in fact, MSG has been studied time and time again, starting in 1958, by important groups of scientists and governmental agencies. And time after time, what has happened is the data comes back and the conclusion is that MSG is a perfectly safe ingredient. So much so that there's not even an upper limit on the amount that you can put into food. And it's not just the US. It's also governmental and scientific bodies in Europe, in Asia, and in fact, even at the UN with the World Health Organization, over and over again, it has been proven to be a completely safe molecule. So you've learned about what this umami sensation is. You've learned about where it comes from and how it's made by different molecules like ribonucleotides acting synergistically with that glutamate molecule or, or the sodium and free glutamic acid. You know that. And you also know that it's a perfectly safe molecule to use in cooking. Now, the next step is for you. Go in the kitchen and try it. Put some MSG on different products. Put it into eggs, put it into soup, and watch what happens to the flavor perception. Watch what happens to the entire level of the flavor in the food. Give it a try, experiment, and I think you'll be surprised, happily surprised with what you see.